Hello, my name is Jessie Dummer, and I'm the Digitization Project Coordinator at the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies here at the Kislak Center for Special Collections, Rare Books, and Manuscripts at Penn Libraries. Today I'm going to give you a short introduction on how to use WGET to bulk download manuscripts from uh, OPEN, our website for digital primary resources that are openly available to the public. So, uh, what is WGET? WGET is a command line utility available for Linux, Mac, and Windows machines. Um, it, uh, using the command line means interacting with your computer using text commands and a terminal interface. It's a concise and powerful way to interact with the computer. We have put instructions on the technical readme document on open on how to install WGET on your computer. Um, it's down towards the bottom. Yes. Downloading files with WGET. Here's the information on how to install it if you have Mac or Windows. And it's the instructions are easy to follow. There are a few things though that we need to talk about before launching into using WGET. The first is the directory structure. You're probably all quite familiar with the concept of a directory. We use directories all the time to organize files and folders. For instance, in your documents folder. Here's, here's a folder called Microsoft User Data, and in that there's a bunch of folders. Um, the important thing that I'd like you to understand is the parent-child relationship in a, in a directory. A folder that contains another folder is the parent. So here, Microsoft User Data is the parent to Word script menu items. And in turn, this is the parent to this folder. And the child is the folder that's contained within a folder. And that's really all there is to it. Another thing that you need to know before you get started is navigating the command line. And we have some basic information on how to navigate using the command line um, in the technical readme. But let's open Terminal right now and get started. Okay. So if I, there's a, there's a few basic commands that you're going to want to need to know um, in order to use wget. The first is print working directory, pwd, enter. That shows you where you are in the directory structure at that moment. Another command is ls. That tells you um, what folders and files are in this folder jdummer. So I know by print working directory pwd that I am in the jdummer folder and within that if I list what's in the jdummer folder these are all the different um, folders and files that are in the jdummer folder. Um, another command that's important is CD, which stands for change directory. So if I wanted to go down into the folder, if I wanted to go from the parent folder, jdummer, to say documents, I would type cd documents, enter. And that now tells me that I'm in the documents folder. If I want to list what's in the documents folder, I type ls. And as you can see, these are the different things that are in the uh, documents folder. Now if I want to go back up, if I want to move back up the directory, I'd type cd dot dot. And then if I type print working directory, that tells me again I'm back to where I started from. All right, so say I wanted to go two layers down. Say I wanted to go to the documents folder and then within that into this manuscripts folder. Let's do that. ls. Okay, there's nothing in there. Um, good to know, but I was able to navigate to this by um, putting a slash and then putting manuscripts as well. Now if I want to move two directories back up, cd dot dot slash dot dot slash, and that takes me back to jdummer. Okay, so it's pretty easy to move around in the, uh, in the command line. And as you can see, if we go in here, um, Sorry, one second. 
let's go to desktop. Here's the documents folder. So as you can see, the documents folder that has the manuscripts folder that I was just in and nothing's in there. But if I go in to this one, there's a bunch of images. So let's look at that one. Oops. Okay, right, so we want to go in the Documents folder, then MS Codex 104, and if I list that, it shows you all of those files that are there. Um, I'm going to go back up one. So um, let's say inside the Manuscripts folder, we want to make a new file called, or a new uh, directory. We can do that by saying make directory and typing um, manuscript one. Now we have a folder in the manuscripts folder called ms1. If we want to remove that directory, we simply type rmdir and now it's gone. So you can make directories and remove directories using the command line as well. Um, and then um, the last command I'm going to enter, which is an important one when you're just starting in wget, is that if you want to abort a process, you want to press control C. Um, I, I can't necessarily demonstrate that to you because it's on the keyboard, but press control C at the same time and you will abort any process of uh, any downloading process that you've started with wget. So now we want to talk about wget commands. When you use wget, you type wget and then you follow it with a series of commands. Um, these commands are nd, which stands for no directory. This tells wget not to use the existing directory structure, um, the open directory structure, and to create one that you give it. In order to create that structure, then, you type dash P, capital P, which stands for directory prefix, and then you give it a directory that you would want. So, for instance, let's say you're downloading LJS255 and you wanted to put it in a folder called LJS255 within a folder called open. It would do that as long as you type dash P and then follow it with a path that you want it to have. Um, Dash NP stands for no parent. This tells wget not to download any files from the parent folder of the folder you're downloading from. So for instance, if I'm in open, if I'm in a data folder, let's say I'm in, uh, let's say I want to get MS Codex 123, and I want to get just the web JPEGs. If I am in this, uh, folder and I start downloading web, web JPEGs but I don't put dash NP here. It'll download from the parent folder too. So it'll down it'll start downloading everything from this parent folder and then everything from this parent folder and then everything from this parent folder. So essentially it'll just start downloading everything from open and you don't want that to happen. Um, so you always want to use dash NP when using wget. Another useful command is dash r, which stands for recursive. This tells wget to download all the files from the folder you are, are targeting, as well as any child folders within the targeted folder. So say you want to download everything from MS Codex 110. So if you go into MS Codex 110, you can point at just this folder and use the command dash r, and it will recursively go down into the master folder as well as the thumb folder, as well as the web folder, and get all of that stuff. Um, so that's one you don't necessarily always want to use, but it's a helpful one to know. And last but not least, uh, the dash A command is the, uh, tells the uh, program which file type to accept. So if I just wanted JPEGs, I type dash A dot JPEG, 
if I just wanted XML, I'd type dash a dot XML or just TIFFs, dash a dot TIFF. If you want both TIFFs and JPEGs, but you don't want XML, you can put both. Great, so now I'm going to use a couple of examples just to show you how this works. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go and I'm going to go to LJS 101. Um, the Lawrence J. Schoenberg collection is uh, a quick note about collection IDs. Every collection has a collection ID, and the Lawrence J. Schoenberg collection ID is 001. So if you're in the data folder, you, if you want to download a manuscript from the LJS Lawrence J. Schoenberg collection, you want to go into the 0001 folder. Then you find LJS 101. And let's say I just want this file here, the web JPEG of this one image. What I would do is copy the URL, go back to terminal, type wget, and paste the terminal in. And there is the evidence that it just worked. So let's go find it in Finder. Um, there we go. Oh, actually, yeah. So and it will download. It will download to any folder that you are currently in. So if I do print working directory, it tells me where I am, and that's the folder that it's going to download the image into. If you don't specify where you want it to go. And here's the web JPEG, which just downloaded to my computer. So that's great. Uh, um, normally you're not going to want to use wget to um, download just one file. Um, you could easily do that by right clicking on it. Um, you're going to want to use wget to download in bulk. So I just wanted to show you really quickly how it works. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's go to MS Codex 104, which is from the pen collection of manuscripts, which happens to be collection ID 0002. And let's navigate to MS Codex 104. And let's get all the JPEGs from this collection. So since I'm going to use the recursive command, um, I'm just going to go to the data folder, and if I use the recursive command, it'll get the, the thumbs and the web JPEGs for me. So I'm going to type wget, which tells the computer to use the wget program. I'm going to type no parent because I don't want to download the whole website. I'm going to type recursive because I want it to get everything. Uh, I want it to go down into those folders and get everything, and then I'm going to use the accept list command and say get JPEGs. Um, then I'm going to copy this URL just in the data folder. I don't have to go, I don't want to go down into the thumbnail folder because if I use this URL then it would only get the thumb JPEGs or if I went in here it would only get the web JPEGs. so I want to be on this level so it gets both. And then I'm going to paste this in and note I'm not using the uh, dash nd command or the dash p command because I want to show you what happens when you don't use those. All right, so I just pressed enter and now it's working. Let's see. Okay, and it's done. So as you can see, this is a very quick process just to get the JPEGs. The JPEGs don't take long to get because um, they're small files. And here I am in my manuscripts folder. And what it did is it actually used um, the directory structure in open and it put it in this folder called open.library.upen.edu inside a folder called data, inside a folder uh, with the collection ID, inside MS Codex 104. Then you have the data folder. There's nothing in the master folder here because we didn't ask for TIFFs, but all the thumbnails are in the thumb folder and all the JPEGs, web JPEGs are in the web folder. Um, so if you don't type nd, dash nd, um, it will use the open directory structure. So you may or may not want that. It's up to you. Um, but I am just going to uh, get rid of that. All right. 
So let's see what happens if we don't use um, the dash np command. I'm going to go to collections and what I want to do is check the ID of the Quaker and Special Collections um, at Haverford College, which is 006, 0006, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go to the 0006 folder and I am going to go to this item and say, okay, I want to uh, Sorry, I'm going to go here and I'm going to try and get the XML for all of these items that are in this collection, in the 0006 collection, the Haverford collection. So I'm going to type wget-nd-p. So nd, I'm going to give it my own directory structure and I'm going to tell it what prefixes I want. So I'm going to just put it in a folder called Quaker. I'm going to accept only XML files and I want it to go down into each folder into each folder and get that XML so I need the recursive um, but let's say I forget that dash NP um, I'll show you what happens so let's paste this okay okay well it looks like okay everything's working right um, you know things are downloading but if I go here to I'll notice that um, if I look in the folder it's downloading all sorts of um, TEI XML files from um, manuscripts that are outside of the collection that I wanted it to get. So uh, as soon as I notice that, I'm going to do Control C and abort the process, and that'll just stop it right away. So if you run into any problems, um, just remember Control C. Great. So I'm going to move that to the trash because I don't want all of those on my computer right now. Um, okay, one last example. Um, if we go to back to, say, MS Codex 104, where we were at before, let's go to, that is in collection 0002. Okay, and let's say I want to do the same thing. I want to get all those JPEGs again. Um, but I forget to use the recursive command. Um, this is what will happen. And then I need to copy this link. Okay. So we can see it created the folder, but it didn't download anything other than this index.html file into the folder. Um, so none of the JPEGs were picked up, and that's because we did not use the recursive command. So if we just repeat that command, but we include the recursive command here, then um, this should give us what we want. And here we go. Yep, there's all the thumbnails and web JPEGs of every uh, everything that I asked for. And since I gave it my own directory structure, it put them all in one folder together. So um, that's it for the demonstrations on how to use wget. Um, I would like to again remind you that um, in the technical readme under the technical help link, if you scroll down to the bottom, we do provide um, wget recipes here. Um, so we, you know, tell you all the commands here and what they do. And um, so if you, um, you know, want an easy reference, just go to the technical readme. So uh, thank you very much. I hope you found this useful and um, uh, happy downloading.